In this video, we take a look at some of the different lossy and lossless compression methods. If you haven't seen the previous video which introduced compression, go back and watch that first. So the MP3 file format is a file format commonly used for playing music on computers and mobile devices, and it's a lossy compression method. MP3 compression technology can reduce the size of a music file by as much as 90%, while still retaining a lot of the audio quality. The algorithm actually removes sounds that the human ear can't hear properly. For example, it could remove sounds outside the range of the human ear. If two sounds are played at the same time, it can identify only the louder sound, which can be more easily heard, and then remove the quieter, softer sound. This is known as perpetual music shaping. Switching to images, we can consider JPEG, which is a common lossy technique. It's used for compressing bitmap images, and the compression algorithm is based on two key principles. First, it's the idea that the human eye can't detect differences in colour shades as well as it can detect differences in image brightness. By separating pixel colour from brightness, an image can be split into blocks, for example 8x8. Certain information can then be discarded from the image without actually causing a noticeable deterioration in quality. So that's a couple of methods of lossy compression. Now let's look at lossless. Well, there are many different methods of lossless compression. A popular one is called Huffman coding, and it's often used to compress text-based data. Now, as we know, with lossless compression, the idea is we only re-encode the data so we can get back everything we need. And that's essential for text-based documents and, for example, program executables. It's a common mistake by candidates, therefore, to think that images never use lossless compression, that you always use lossy. And while this is often the case, there are quite popular lossless image compression techniques. One which is actually mentioned in your specification is run length encoding. So let's take a look at that now. Here we're going to show a simple bitmap image, and it's consisting of only two colours, white and black. So therefore, we're going to be able to store, for example, white pixels as a zero and black pixels as a one. If I simply write that out then in the same order as the pixels from the bitmap, you can see here I have a sequence of 100 zeros and ones. So that's 100 bits of information I have to store. But you will have noticed there are lots of contiguous sections of white pixels and black pixels. So what I actually have here is 22 white pixels followed by six black pixels, followed by eight white pixels, followed by one black pixel, and so on and so forth. We can translate that one step further into what are known as frequency data pairs. So we have the number 22 and the number zero. 22 tells us how many pixels we're gonna have, and the next number zero tells us what color. So 22 zeros is 22 whites. Six one is then six blacks. So as a summary, lossy compression is a compression algorithm which eliminates unnecessary data, but it means the original file cannot be reconstructed once it's been compressed. It uses various methods, and depending on the file type, this could include information discarding and perceptual music shaping. Some lossy compression algorithms include JPEG, MP4, MP3, WMV, and MPG. As you can see, it's quite popular with multimedia formats. Lossless compression, on the other hand, we make sure that all the data for the original uncompressed file can be reconstructed. It's important for files where any loss of data would be an issue. Some of the methods we've uh, discussed could include run length encoding for images, Huffman encoding for text files, and some example of lossless compression formats are TIFF, PDF, GIF, PNG, and ZIP files.